trying to stir up condemnation or shame. I'm just telling you guys, sexual perversion and immorality is a huge issue for us. Like, honestly, truly, I, I'm, like, I'm like a drug freak in, man. Like, I, I was hooked on all sorts of stupid crap, and I got cleaned up, like, you know, 12 years ago, something like that. It's been a long time, which is awesome. Hallelujah, for sure. But, but here's the thing. How many of you guys know, statistically, that pornography ruins more families than alcoholism? Isn't that interesting? We got dudes that are, like, X up to the throat, just jerking off every night in porn. It's interesting. We're setting ourselves up for failure. Do you know that sexual sin is the only sin that's against yourself? It damages something in the spirit. Isn't that interesting? It's a serious thing. So I get delivered, basically. I go from having all this, like, abusive garbage going on in my heart to being freed up. And over the course of time, the girl I ended up marrying was that girl, the mother of my daughter, Marin, who's nine, who just got back from summer church camp, which was awesome, and she learned to swim better, which was good. Like, her mom and I were married, and within a year of us getting married, she ended up sleeping with a guy I was in a band with, in front of everybody. Like, everybody knew about it. All these, like, these dudes, everyone saw it, and I wasn't a Christian. There was something in my heart that said, I know what it's like to be him. Do you guys understand that? You reap what you sow. It's not a joke, you guys. I, you cannot mess around with sin. By sin, I mean less than. When you know the good that you could do, but you don't do it, that's the compromise that he wants to get us on every time. Do you understand that thing will kill you? so bad, you'll kill yourself. It's not a joke. So, years later, I walk through this thing, I look a lot like Jesus, because I'm not going to beat this kid up. I'm going to give him grace. Everyone else is freaking out. Like, it's one of the few times I've seen one of my closest friends, who's quite stoic, who will remain nameless, that doesn't talk very much, that everyone thinks hates him. It's one of the only times I've ever really seen him cry. And he looked at me, and he said, I feel like you are, you're getting totally dying, and you won't let me do anything about it. Because you have to operate in the opposite spirit of the thing that's coming after you. Does this make sense? I didn't know. I just wanted to... If Jesus said, turn the other cheek, I wanted to try it. I wanted to do what I wouldn't normally do. Okay? In the process of that, all of a sudden, God started blessing my life, and he showed up, and that's when I met Jesus that process. And then he's like, hey, there's a bunch of hurting kids. You want to tell them about me? And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> like, I really love him. He became really, really real, you guys. Like, he's a real dude. For real. Really. <laughs> really. No, so, so that happened. So then I ended up getting married, man. I ended up getting married a couple years later to this, like, amazing woman of God who's hot, who This girl, and I just want to show you guys something because I feel like this is something that God wants to deal with. Okay, so that's the moral of the story, is just the song. But it's like I really feel like God wants to deal with something. I know what it feels like to be with a girl in a really awesome, like the moon's out, you're outside, you're new, she's new, everything's awesome, and you like are romantical, but you got someone that you're hooked up with. So you engage with this person and everything gets fragmented walking in deception. And then you're trying to figure a way out of it. I know what it feels like to be stained. <clears throat> so I think about my wife, and I think about Chrissy, who's hot. And what I, what I think about is she's a woman of noble character. She would love Jesus if I told her I'm not going to love Jesus anymore. Basically, she'd be like, oh, great. See how that works out for you. I'll see you when you come back around the mountain. You know, like, she is not going to let go of Jesus, no matter what. That is the thing that attracted me to her, because we're polar opposites. Amen. It's, it's crazy. She's way quiet. I'm like, wah, 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 wah. She's like. Just pray for me, because I'm an idiot. Like, that's her. And she's awesome. But 
here's the thing. I can't, I love, like I've had girls, it's just a few, because I don't, this doesn't happen very much, praise God. I've had a few girls hit on me since I've been married. Like just out, you know, just stupid stuff in passing. And there's a violence in my heart that comes out. It's one of the reasons why I'll tell you guys, my, my wife is a bad horse. She is so sweet. Like, there's no way I'm going to let go. Does that make sense? There's like a defiance in my heart. Like, no, 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 no. Because it's like, this is pure. To me, it's like one of the first things. So, so if someone comes up to me and is like, hey, man, you, you know, some girl or anybody, I. So, if somebody walks up to me, if a girl approaches me, if someone would try to compromise my covenant, I love the feeling of being pure way too much. I think honestly and truly about men in ministry falling sexually. I got a name. I'm up here in front of you guys, like jumping around. Oh, Jesus is awesome. Love Jesus. Like, how many of me? some hot girl 30 years from now trying to take me out. But there's something in my heart that goes like, God, I would do it. I know me. And then this fire on the inside, like, God, I love being pure. Please protect me. Does that make sense, you guys? That is the fear of the Lord. Does that make sense? I don't want to compromise the purity that I have in my heart. It's like, time this is happening. Don't you guys get it? It's like the only time this is worked out for me. I don't want to compromise. And Jesus calls you his bride. I want you to get a vision for your life here. All the subtle compromise. All the sexual garbage. All of the anger. All the unforgiveness. It's threatening your purity. Jesus wants you guys to you know that I saw him tonight, like on a throne, like above this tent. Isn't that sweet? But he, there's a part where I don't want him to come in here if we can't bear what he would do. Does this make sense? Hebrews it says, consider the kindness and the severity of our God. Jesus isn't Santa Claus. Not an idiot. And he wouldn't drop on. 